worship. Thank you so much, Angie. I just love Angie. She has such a warmth about her, right? Like, greatest hugs. That is just a ministry right there. Great hugs is a real ministry. It's a, it's a gift of the Spirit. I'm telling you, it's the truth. They just left it out of the Bible, but we know Angie's got it. Uh, as she said, my name is Dalton Beckering, and these are my amazing teammates and my amazing apostles, and we'll get to them later on, but we are from the Next Gen Prophets. If you can read that right there, we made a bunch of these shirts so that everywhere we go, people know we represent the Next Gen Prophets. And today, we are going to teach you how to hear God better. And we're actually offering um, this book here, Eight Ways to Hear the Voice of God. Pastor Colette, would you mind raising your hand? That's the author right there of this amazing book. Yep, yep. And it is one of the best resources you can possibly get on hearing God. And we are gifting it to you for $5. If you haven't seen one of these papers yet, um, please do ask for one. I know that they have a bunch of them. Oh, there we go. Um, all you have to do is scan this QR code. It'll send you to our website. And you just put, it in, you, you put the uh, product in your cart at checkout, and there's going to be a place to put a discount code, and that is SOZO. I made that code. I'm very proud of how simple and easy it is to remember. You guys will be able to remember it. But this is one of the best materials that you can possibly get on hearing God's voice, and we want you to have it. It's going to transform how you hear God. It is going to make it extremely clear how God speaks to you. It's going to be able to teach you how to teach others. How many people in your life do you just wish could understand God is speaking to them? Well, this is one of those books that you can very, very easily teach them through steps one, two, three of how to hear God. And we want to give this to you with this code. And so today we're going to teach you four ways how to hear God in the next hour. So you got time for that. That's pretty good, I think. Four ways. This morning we covered um, four ways already. And that was Urim and Thummim. It was visions. It was through the still small voice. And finally through the word. But today, you're going to get, in this session, you're going to get four brand new teachings. Yeah, that's right for you, brother. Four brand new teachings on how to hear God's voice. And I guarantee you, I guarantee you, you'll be able to hear it in at least one of these ways and learn all the other ways. But as we, before we get started, let's think about the fact that how hungry we are to communicate. I mean, if you look at any child from the time they're are just out the womb. Give them just 30 seconds, and they are communicating to their mothers. They are crawling. They are going to where they need to go. They're letting you all know, and we know that there's a different cry for a different reason. All the mothers do, and I'm so grateful that, that you, you took on that burden to raise these kids. But the point is, there's a lot of ways of communication, including cell phones. Any of you guys got cell phones? Hmm? I do. It's over there. And uh, you can communicate so many different ways on the cell phones. You can choose email, text message, FaceTime. Some of you guys may prefer just the knock on the door. You know, I tell those people to go away, but maybe that's your preference to, to being communicated with. But the point is, just as many ways as there are to communicate with each other, God is communicating with us. And if you're not hearing him in all these different ways, your life isn't being fully touched by the Lord. You're not experiencing the, the presence and the love of God like you could be. So as my team comes up today, I want you to have your hearts open. I want you to have your spirits open to receive these different ways, this impartation and this ability to hear from God all these different ways. And I just want to pray over you before we get started, okay? So Lord... Just break down every barrier that has been put up over the years that has made them incapable of hearing you. It has made them incapable of just receiving your word. I break that division in their hearts, in their minds, and in their spirits, and I call them open to receive your word, to receive your wisdom and revelation for their lives. I call their hearts open and their hands ready to receive this new gifts that you have available for them. And in Jesus' name, we just speak your word to come through now in every possible way in their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. That being said, I'm going to call up my apostle and my spiritual father, Craig Toach, to teach you the first of four ways. Woo! 
Thank you so much. I see a few faces from the first session, but what I'm going to do is I want to just start by going over those last ones just to quickly catch you up for those that have just joined you. But before I start, I want to let you in on a little secret that frustrates me so much. As you know, I've got an accent, right? And if that's not bad enough in America having an accent, I live in Mexico. So you know that we have the Spanish-English dilemma especially when I come with now my ever so English accent. It actually brings a problem with so many people because as I've traveled throughout the world, there are sometimes people just think they're not gonna understand you. Have you ever had that? You will walk up to a person and you will use very clear language. You will speak very clear English and they'll go, excuse me? Well, you know, I've lived in Mexico, so I've learned a little bit of how to use the inflections to sound a little bit like a Spanish person. So when I try and speak Spanish and a person goes, ¿Qué? I'm like, what's what you king? What's going on? Why, why didn't you understand that I asked for agua? There's no way to mess up agua. Agua is agua, it's water. Just give me a glass of water, please. I mean, it's that simple. But because they see gringo and they say they're waiting for me to slaughter water, they just won't understand me. And it's like, but I'm speaking very clearly to you. It's very simple, just listen. And you know, this is the point I wanna make today. Is I'm drawing on this, and I'm drawing on it for a purpose, guys, is because we sometimes do this to the Lord. We are so busy trying to wait for the slaughtered agua that we're not listening for agua. We are so busy taking a moment to try and think how God's going to speak to us, that we're kind of saying, God, you're not talking to me. But he is. Guys, we need to start on a clean slate. And this is where I want you to start today, is even as we've spoken about the last four, for those of you that were in the first session, you need to come with a clean slate. Because I have found, even in my own life, when I come with preconceived ideas, when I think I know how God wants to reach me, or if I don't think He's going to reach me, I'm putting a wall between my opportunity to reach God. Now hear me there, because this is where it's at. I can't hear God. Why can't you? You have Jesus within you. You received Him. You, you could hear Him on salvation. So why now did he change? If he could reach you in the darkest of sin, when you were the heathen of heathens, the sinner of sinners, and he could say to you, take my hand. I want to be your Lord and Savior. I want to be the lover of your soul. If you could hear him right there, things only got better, guys. And so that's why I want you to come with that clean slate. I want you to come with that mindset where we don't speak to God anymore or God can't speak to us or Jesus isn't for me or Jesus doesn't love me. And there's so many gamuts of stuff. As a parent, we have fathers who don't want to speak to their children. There's just, just add all that baggage that comes with us from growing up. And it's like, we need to take that aside. We need to cast it aside and we need to start as I love Dalton pushed on a child coming out of the womb for the very first time. Because when we come out of the womb for the first time, we are now in a place where anything can happen. And when anything can happen, you're in a good place. Yes, you're vulnerable. Yes, you're insecure. Yes, you're frustrated. Yes, all that stuff is there but you're in a good place because now God can reach down. As frustrated and as much as you are hungry to reach up, He's gonna reach back down to you. And this is where the eight ways of, to hear God's voice comes in so beautifully. In the first session, I started with Urim and Thummim. And I said, that was such a basic way. It's like the, the traffic lights when you go up to a stop street. It's either green or it's red. You don't need to get revelation. If it's green, we're good to go. If it's red, you're not gonna cross the line because something bad's gonna happen. There's gonna be something. And if you, if you might get away with it, there's probably a camera that's gonna take a photo of your lovely little license plate and the government's gonna say, thank you so much, we'll take some money from you. It's very simple. If it's green, it's good to go. Red, don't do it. That's it, it's good, awesome. 
And that's what Urim and Thummim basically is. It's when the Lord prompts you in a yes or a no decision to do something or to not. Urim being the red, light, the green light of good, let's go. And Thummim, the red, stop, don't do it. We went on then to the small still voice and and and. Nate poured it out so beautifully of that quick, how we just stop, we need to come. We're always listening to the noise around us, but when we come to that still small voice that prompts us to make a choice. Chaifa, dreams. She did the, the vision, sorry, visions of just getting a picture from the Lord and running with it. Just getting a small picture, starting by just cleansing your mind of all the nonsense that's been going on. You come into a prayer time and you're sitting down and you want to get into this quiet place with the Lord and you're thinking about the, the food that is burning, the work at, at, at the office that you didn't finish, the, the amount of sleep you're not going to have tonight, and you're thinking, I'm trying to get into the presence of the Lord. What's going on? Well, those are the images of the day that are plaguing you. Just carry on going. And eventually that switch starts to take place and you'll start to get visions of a calm brook, the quiet place that Jesus is trying to take you to. And that's where you need to be, okay? And then Colette finished it off. And why I'm doing this is because this leads on to where I'm going to start with you today. And that is the Word. The Word is the basis of everything we are. We want to know about the nature of God. You want to know His love. You want to know what He has for you. The Word of God is it. It's the standard. You read in the Psalms and you have the poetry. You have the, the books with poetry. You have the books with law. You hear his stern voice, but you hear his love. And I don't know about you, but you read some of those books and it just draws you in. And then the problem with that and with many of you is you read a scripture and you go, eh, I don't get it. It just doesn't make sense. Well, that's fine because I have the next step and how to hear the voice of God. And for many of you that are going into ministry and, and becoming ministers yourself, and you're saying, oh boy, this is quite the load. Yes, it is, but I have a cheat. We have the next way to hear God's voice, and that is through journaling. Now, the first thing that I must tell you about journaling is it's not the, the you know, we have two stereotypes of the little girl in, in, in her room talking to, to you know, her little diary, you know, diary. This is very similar to that. Or we have the other one, the captain on the log, writing down every moment. If you take the two and kind of blend them, this is kind of journaling as we know it. And what I'm going to do is I want to show you is that when you come to journaling, first of all, it is a conversation. But for those of you that need a scripture, I'm going to throw one in very quickly for you. It's called 1, Corinthians, uh, 1 Chronicles 28.19. All this, David said, the Lord made me understand in writing by his hand upon me all the works of these plans. And I love what they said there because his hand was upon David. And this is where journaling is so Powerful, Because what you do is when you come to the Lord, like everything else, like every one of these eight ways, you're trying to understand Him. You don't need to be an engineer in this way right away. You work this through. It is a process that you're going to work into. You're going to get better at it every time you try. So if you start feeling like, you know, me on a dance floor with two left legs, you know, I'm not going to do well. But if I practice enough, I might be, you know, I might be able to hold my step and, and, and look pretty good. But that depends on how much I'm going to practice dancing, how much I'm going to apply myself to it. So each one of these steps is as you apply it, you're going to get better. And so this is where it's at. You start wanting to have a conversation with the Lord. That's the desire. I want to hear you, Lord. I want to hear you. So come wanting to have a conversation with the Lord. And when you do that, you're already starting on a good footing. Because guess what? You've got a question. You know, for me, often I'm asking about, hey, you know, Lord, I didn't understand the scripture. Um, Lord, I, I, I've got to minister to this person. Um, Lord, I'm having a tough day today. Can you help me? And in so doing, just coming with that question and, and allowing the Lord to be in that moment with me, I start to hear these words bubble up inside of me. 
Now, some people like to do verbally and they speak it out, but I'm talking about now is typing it out. So I have my trusty iPad, or I started with a notebook, or whatever you're comfortable with. And what you do is you ask a question, and then you just stop, like you've heard the last few times, and you just rest your spirit, and you say, okay, Lord, speak. I love it. I use that. I love what, the, like David used to say, speak, Lord, your servant heareth. And I just come to peace, and I say, okay, Lord, what do you want to tell me? What do you want to say to me, Lord? Can you feel that peace, guys? And in that moment, I will start to hear words bubbling up inside. My child, do not worry about today, for it is today, and you cannot control it. But as you walk through it, I will be with you every step of the way. And yes, there will be trials and tribulations that will come against you, but do not worry, because I will walk you through. I will give you revelation. I will help you to walk each step out. Now that sounds like a prophecy, doesn't it? Well, it was, Jesus was speaking to me. See, you can use this to speak Jesus. I couldn't think that up. Yes, maybe, maybe it sounds very cliched. If I have to now go and record that, I could make a song, I could do so many things with it. But you see, in that moment, the words bubbled up inside of me. Jesus was talking to me because he knew the needs. He knew what I needed in that moment to take the next step. He knew what I needed. And this is what journaling is all about, guys. It is that simple. It is those simple words of him just coming out of your spirit. You know, so often we're waiting to hear this audible voice. We, we, we think of the Old Testament and this verbal voice that used to come and shake the whole room and, and everybody used to fall to the ground. Well, that was Old Testament. There's, there's new stuff. And, and, and so when you're coming now with journaling, you come in a new era. It comes with your Lord and Savior, Jesus, sitting by your side. And you can come. And I, like I said, I use it for everything. My sermon notes, uh, journals I'm going to do, uh, you know, write pieces of writing. If I'm going to minister to somebody, I'm going there beforehand. I'm saying, Jesus, this person's coming. And I've done my homework. I've done enough studying. But what do you want to tell them? What can I do to minister to this person more effectively? I've got a head full of, of, of ideas. I've got a head full of, of stuff that I need and I can apply. I mean, we as, as ministers, we know, oh, I can apply this principle and this inner healing and then this uh, breakthrough. And, the, and you got, your mind is so full of it. But Jesus knows what that person needs to break through. And in that journal, I will pray and I will seek the Lord and he will give me the, the, the pattern that he wants me to work with. When I go to sermons, like today, I will journal. I'll say, okay, how can I reach these people, Lord? I know there's so many ways I can reach you, but this is where it's at. And sometimes he'll do me, he does, he does me the dirty, and he says, I'm going to just do it prophetically. Don't worry about it. You know, for others, he'll say, okay, here's the framework. This is the idea. This is the angle I want you to take. And so when you do that, you reach the hearts of the people because God knows the needs of the people before they come. And that's where it's at today. But journaling starts for you. I want you to start journaling today. God, Lord Jesus is talking to you, the lover of your soul. Father God, Dad, wants to talk to you. He really does. You don't need to be all fearful of, of the Father because He wants to talk to you. The loving Father wants there. The, the Dad wants to take you in His arms and say, hey, son, daughter, you're doing a good job. Yes, okay, there's, there's a few things we need to knock off and there are a th few things you could be better at, but look, look where you've come from. Look where you are at right now. And that's where journaling is so important because as you do that, you're going to go on a journey with him. And every day as you speak, he gives you little things to do. You know, when we started this ministry, <coughs> we started as a geo city and it worked its way up. Would we have left South Africa just for that? No, we didn't. But God said, I have a calling. I'm calling you out. I'm just take these steps. Take these steps. Take everything. Leave the country. Okay. That was a journal. It was a few journals. It was a couple of journals. But we took that step. And then we got to South Africa. We got to Mexico. And the Mexico, everything shut down. And yeah, we're stuck in Mexico. And the, light, and the Lord said, that's fine. Just be with me. Just be my prophets. And we worked our way through. Until we are today, standing as spiritual parents with a podcast that we are now implementing a prophetic 
structure in the church that is going to raise up the fivefold in its true essence. Guys, I was born in South Africa. What chance did I have of coming and, and, and seeing the world? 13 countries later, and I don't know how many other states, it's like, did I know that I was going to go through that process? No, I didn't. But one journal after another told me to take one step after another, and today I stand in front of you, hoping to impart the same fire and excitement and passion that I have learned from journaling. Because if you guys can do that, if he can use a little silly Zimbabwean and a South African and he could raise us up to be apostles and to stand here and to anoint and to appoint and to fire you up to be this church that is going to take this mm, atom bomb. What Apostle Tom and Katie are doing right now, guys, there is a renewal. There is a birth going on inside you. Lord did not bring us here at this moment and at this time to, to just come and to tickle your ears. This is what you guys need for the next steps that are about to go forward. You guys need this. Why? Because you are going to be empowered. There are times where you are going to be out there in the field and Tom and Katie's ears, their their teachings and their voices are going to be there. But you know what? It's Jesus that's going to solidify it. He's going to take this teaching of theirs and that teaching of theirs and he's going to bring it together for you so that when you stand up and you need to minister, their teachings are going to solidify and it's what we call it become your gospel. You know, Paul said, it's my gospel. Because that's what happened. The teachings became so living that it was his gospel. Well, you know what? Tom and Katie are pouring into you. The word of God is being poured into you. And there needs to come a place where it becomes your gospel. And that's what happens. My team, when they speak, they speak our gospel. They speak the gospel because they have lived it. And that is through the journaling. And I'm not going to go on too much longer because I could probably do this all day. But I'm not going to do it. Um, who am I giving it to? I got, oh, there we go, Shaifa. I got so excited about what I'm saying about. I didn't, uh, I forgot who I'm going to hand over to. <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to hand over to Shaifa because she's got the next step in the leg of the race of the eight ways to hear God's voice. Thank you, Apostle. Yes, I, I love that you started with that because he, he is my apostle that I work directly under. And if I have any, you know, like if I come to him with anything, he's like, where's the journal? Did you ask the Lord? <laughs> and so before I even ask anything, I go ask the Lord. I'm like, I got my journal. This is what he said. <laughs> and then I test it, put it in the fire. Amen. So the next, I <laughs> love you too, the next um, way to hear God's voice, I'm going to talk about tongues, utterance, and interpretation. Now, you know when you're married, right, you just, you like, you just do things in front of them, you, you are yourself, they see parts of you you usually wouldn't show, you go to the bathroom in front of them, you know, those kind of things. So my husband, he made this post on uh, one of our networking platforms. It's kind of like Facebook, but it's a private Facebook for all like thousands of prophets and apostles to see. And his post was, um, what, uh, how do you know you are married to a prophet? <laughs> dot, dot, dot. And he said, I'll go first. And he said, when you're driving along the highway and suddenly your spouse breaks into high level warfare in tongues. Korabashi tarabasi tarabasa. And I was like, oh, I, I was like, yeah, you got me. I do do that. I do do that. I, I didn't realize that you were there when I do that. <laughs> You know, because it's just your spot. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that with you guys. I don't want to scare you. I don't want to scare anybody. No. But with my husband, yes, that's, that's what you do. Because tongues, when you speak in tongues, <laughs> when you speak in tongues, especially when I go into prayer or warfare or anything like that, it's just, there's just so much more emotion than English. You know, if any of you speak a second language, I've often heard it's like when you get in a fight, you know, there's so much emotion there. You, you, switch, you switch your language 
It's like English doesn't do it how I feel right now. And you switch over to something that has so much more emotion. If I could just say it this way, that's heavier. And that is what uh, speaking in tongues is like. It bypasses my mind. And I don't know what I say to the devil sometimes. I'm just like, I'm like, I don't know what I just said to him, but I feel like I put him underneath my feet. <laughs> Some demons, I put them underneath my feet. And that's what the gift of tongues does. It bypasses the mind. Because when you're flowing in the spirit, the mind is the biggest blockage. Because you're trying to understand with your mind what can only be grasped in the spirit. So I'm going to show you how to hear from God through tongues, utterance, and interpretation. But before I do, I, I, I do got a scripture for you. It is 1 Corinthians 14, 5. I wish you all spoke with tongues, but even more that you prophesied. For he who prophesies is greater than he who speaks with tongues, unless indeed he interprets that the church may receive edification. Now, if you guys missed the first meeting, we talked a lot about the living streams that are inside of you. Jesus said um, there will be waters of rivers of living water that will bubble up from within you and will flow out of you. And that he's talking about the prophetic stream. Jesus lives inside of you. If you want to hear him, you don't go like this. You, you go like this. You quiet your spirit and you listen for his still small, that small voice inside of you. Now, each one of us has a living stream coming, bubbling from outside of us. But have you guys seen a stream that's in the city? And you see litter, you see garbage, you see Coke cans, you see, it's just nasty. It's not nice. And if you drink from it, it's gonna have some contamination. Now, we all have living streams, and it is living waters. But sometimes we collect so much dirt, so much stuff, so much contamination, too many Netflixes, you know, things like that. So what you do with tongues is you start to clear that stream. You know when you've left a faucet on for, when you haven't used it for a long time, and then you turn it on and the first thing you see is all this yellow and gawk and goo. But if you just let that stream keep going and going, eventually that stream is gonna clear up. And that's what you use tongues for, is to build your spirit up, and it boosts you up. And what you do is you start by just speaking in tongues daily for just 30 minutes, an hour, just kakarabashi tarabasita, because like I was telling you earlier, speaking in tongues is tapping into your spirit. So the more you speak in tongues and tap into your spirit, the clearer that gush is going to come out. The clearer that river bed is going to come out. And you know you need to do this again. When your spirit feels clogged, you don't feel sharp in the spirit. You know, it's like that. It's like having one bar on your cellular versus four bars. You trying to get that, you know, I'm, try, I'm trying to send this picture. It's been trying to send for the last 20 minutes. I'm trying to get this text, but I can't get any text. And sometimes that's how your spirit feels like, feels blocked. You're not on 5G anymore. You are in like one bar. And it's taking so long to try and understand what is God saying to me. I feel the download coming, but it's just not coming fast enough. Speak in tongues. Speak in tongues for half an hour or an hour or until you feel that release. At first, when you try, you're going to karabashi satama. But keep pressing through until you feel that, you know, when you first got tongues, you didn't have to try much. It was like, 
you want to push through till you get that again. And once you get that, you know your stream is clear. You don't have that dirty, nasty city water stream with gunk and garbage and all that. And you're not contaminating God's people. This is good. <laughs> this is a good thing. So now I'm going to go to the fun part because you know how to use tongues. You know what it's for. But how do you hear God using tongues, utterance? And now we get to the interpretation part. I'm going to give you clear steps, easy one, two, three. And here's the secret, guys. Practice in your private prayer closet. You know, you see all these prophets and these fivefold leaders come up in here and they're so bold and they're so confident and they're like prophesying all over the place and you're like, man, they're so, they're so awesome. They're so great at this. They're so confident. What you don't see is how they've been practicing in their prior prayer closet and they didn't just come up here and just perfection that you see. And you too can practice this. I did. I practiced this. I didn't get up here and just, you know, just start prophesying, just feel so free and feel so homey and comfortable with it. I practice in my private prayer closet, and you can too. So number one, get into his presence. Now for a lot of you, you're going to do that through worship. To just quieting your spirit, pouring out to him, worshiping him. Um, some of you guys, you may pray in tongues. You may like to get into his presence, just pray in tongues, just clear out your stream, get out all your thoughts. Uh, I'm going to leave this up. You know how to get into his presence your way. Where you are quiet and you're in that secret place and it's just you and him. Get to that place. That's step number one. Number two. Start praying in tongues. Start praying in tongues towards a direction, whatever you want to ask him about. I don't know if it's intercession, if it's you, whatever it is. Pick a focus and just start speaking in tongues. That's step number two. Step number three. This is when you step out in faith. And it's just like prophecy. It takes a step and a choice to step out and just open your mouth, ask the Lord for the interpretation, and then speak out that interpretation. And listen, this is just, it's just you and God. If you mess this up, if you speak your mind, which you will, you're going to be speaking your mind for the, probably the first five minutes, first 10 minutes. It's just your thoughts, but as you keep on going, it takes practice. You're going to develop this, and it's going to become so easy for you. Prophesy over yourself. And then step into the Lord's shoes as if you are the Lord himself. Like, My child, stop being so worried. Why are you carrying the weight of the world on your shoulders? You don't have the shoulders to carry that weight. Give it to me. Put, give me your burdens. For most of the things you carry, my child, they are your own obligations. There are those things that you put them on yourself, but I didn't ask you to put these on. I didn't expect these things for you. Let go. And he, there you just heard from God. You just heard from the Lord to you. Maybe you're prophesying about your child. Who, whoever it is that you're praying about. For indeed, I know that it doesn't look good right now and it, they look like they're going a wrong way. But don't you know that I know their story and I've authored it from the beginning to the end. I've already sent my angels and I will bring them back unto me. That's it. That's how easy it is. And the more comfortable you get with it, it doesn't take long. It really, really, really doesn't. And it's nothing super spiritual or super special. Anybody can do it. In fact, our 12-year-old, well, he's 13 now, but I mean, everyone in this family has been prophesying since they were, I don't know, since they knew how to speak in tongues. 
And they're not prophets or apostles or anybody holier than thou. And if they can do it, you guys can do it too. So now, the next one, I get the pleasure of introducing my husband. He is also a prophet. And okay, I'm going to get him though because this is my time to shine. <laughs> How do you know you're married to a prophet? When you ask him a question, whatever it is, and say, and what do you think? And then you get this long silence. Not, did you hear me? What, what did you think? And silent. And then I get a, trying to listen to my spirit to see what I feel in the spirit. That's how you know you're married to a prophet. <laughs> So Nathan, I like to bring you up. He he's I think he's more prophet than me. Come on up. I'm speaking to you, my children. Yes, I'm already speaking, and you're already hearing. For I'm speaking to you in your wake and I'm speaking to you in your sleep. I'm speaking to you on your job and I'm speaking to you in your car. For I'm always speaking. And it is simply time for you to incline your ear and listen. Hear me as I whisper to you. See me as I stand in front of you. For I have so much to share with you and so much to say to you. I love you. You are mine and I am yours. And this word is not for someone near you. It's for you. My voice is for you. My love, it's for you. And that's why you're here. And that's why I'm speaking. <laughs> I want to talk to you about hearing God through your circumstances. Now, I remember this time when, uh, when I was seeking the Lord before I got married. And I was seeking him for my, for my wife because I knew he wanted to give me a wife. But I wanted to figure out how and who it was and where I was going to find her. And I remember I was reading the word. And when I was reading the word... I came upon that scripture, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you, blah, blah, blah. You know, the, everyone knows that scripture. Then I remember some time goes by and I'm just spending some time in prayer and get this vision as we talked about, uh, about hearing the Lord through visions. And I saw this vision of myself standing on the stage, doing the work of God, leading worship, and I look out in the crowd, and there was my amazing wife just standing there watching me lead worship in the crowd. And the Lord said to me, you're going to find her as you do the work. She'll be just sitting right in front of you. And then I remember some, uh, like, a few months or, not yeah, it was a few months that went by. It wasn't long. And I was here in the ministry, and uh, in Toch Ministries, of course, and um, Apostles Craig and Colette, they say this to me. Hey, do you think that maybe Chaifa could be, you know, the one? And I'm just like, say what? For those of you that don't know me and Chaifa, we have a story. We're a, we are known as the trouble couple. And there's a reason behind that story, but I'm here to talk to you about hearing God through your circumstances. So I will try to be quick on this part right here. But... We were known as the trouble couple, and um, the Lord knew that we needed those words because, well, we had so many things that we had to work through, so much of our background, so much hurt in our old relationships that we really, even though we wanted to find a spouse, it was, we had to work through a lot of hurt, damage, and wounding, or whatever else, so we were kind of on the on the edge of whether or not we were going to take that step. And it was very interesting that the Lord did this. But I shared this with you to get you to notice this one thing. Did you see the progression of how I heard the Lord through my circumstances? If I had not already heard the Lord 
tell me in the word that I would just, you know, just seek my kingdom, seek me first, and then this will be added to you. And then if I didn't have it followed up by the Holy Spirit prompting me through the vision saying, ah, oh, yes, while you're doing the work, she'll be sitting right in front of you. Literally, I mean, we were best friends. She was right in front of me, didn't even see her. And the same, she didn't even see, not in that way. We were just like, let's go have a prayer time together. Let's go do this. Let's, let's go just beat down the gates of hell together. And we were on fire for the Lord. And it really took our apostles to be like, you guys don't see what the Lord is doing there? Hello, are you, are you alive? Are you there? And we needed the Lord to speak to us through our circumstances because we weren't willing to hear him on our own about that circumstance. Now this is when and how God speaks to you through your circumstances. Now, I'm a little weary when you're walking about down the, down the road and you're like, whoo, oh, did y'all see that? Two eagles just flew by. Oh, the number two. Oh, hold on, wait a minute. I think I'm getting something in the spirit. Mmm. The Lord is saying that there's gonna be two roads that you gotta choose between. Mm. Just stop, just stop, just stop. Stop! Red light! Don't do it to yourself. The Lord is not gonna beat you down with two turtle doves to give you his word and a number two. That's the bathroom. Just don't, don't do the number two. Come on. When the Lord comes to give you a word of confirmation through your circumstances, let it be what I just said. Confirmation through your circumstances. You don't need God to shout at you for the first time with two turtle doves. It's rude. Isn't it? That's so rude. It's like you're coming along and just bam, something just strikes you. It's like you're not Apostle Paul hearing the Lord for the first time where he's got to smack you down on the road of Damascus so that you can hear what he has to say to you. Are you? Does he need to smack you down to get a word through to you? Yes. Now, I'm not saying that that will never happen. Of course, it happens sometimes, and we are a stubborn people. Sometimes the Lord needs to give us a little bit of a backhand. I mean, hey, I'll, I'll raise my hand. I'm not afraid to say prideful and stubborn. The Lord has to sometimes put me in my place. It happens. However, if that's happening all the time, that is not the nature of our Lord Jesus. He is not forceful. He is not pushy. He is not controlling. He's not demanding. He doesn't put his thumb on us to put us in our place and make us listen. You will listen to me. You will listen. It's like, goodness gracious, you ain't got no authority. You got to shout like that. He doesn't have to do that. He loves us, and he always just woos us to himself. He talks to us so gently, and it's so beautiful. Now, I have this passage of scripture that you all hear all the time, and I'm just gonna read the first part of it, Mark 16, 17. And these signs will follow those who believe. Now, we all know the parts after that. This is where it gets down. You're going to lay hands. You're going to do this. You're going to do this. Everybody's like, yeah, these signs are going to follow me because I'm a believer. Woo, 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 woo. But I want you to pay attention to this part. And these signs follow those who believe. How many times have you found yourself following the signs? But did you write, did you, are we reading the same King James, New King James Version together? Is that, do you guys see that? 
And these signs will follow those who believe. And, not, and these believers will follow and chase after all the signs and all the grandiose visions and all the wonderful people out there that are prophesying on the TV screens. And my people, they will chase after everything except for me just because it looks awesome and glorious. Absolutely not. I'm a son of the king. A child of God, blood bought by my father. His precious son died and given to me. I will chase after nothing except for Jesus who paid his very blood for my life. Oh, did you see that person get up? Oh, they're so powerful, so anointed. We're going to go to the next revival? I sure won't, not unless Jesus tells me to. Because I'm following after Jesus. Not following after the next televangelist. What do you think this is? We serve the one true risen king. We don't follow after signs. We follow after the savior. <laughs> so, as you're walking about, now I'm going to get ready to pass it over for the last sign. Oh, okay. <coughs> well, Maybe, maybe not. Let's see. But after, as I'm ending about the way of hearing him through your circumstances, I want you to know this. When you're hearing God through your circumstances, don't keep trying. Don't force. Don't try to force yourself to hear him through your circumstances. Don't force those circumstances. Don't force the, the situations in your life to come the way you want them to come. Don't, you know... How many times have we, um, because we're not getting a confirmation or we're not seeing what we want or hearing what we want, you start trying to like, okay, let me just go to the altar again and get prayer again. And, uh, let, or let me go to this person and call them on the phone and, and let me see if they can tell me. It's like you ca contact like three, four different people and you, you're like pushing and trying to force yourself to get the revelation you want. You know, let me say it like this. We are spirit, soul, and body. And sometimes what we don't realize is when we, ha we have faith, and faith, when you release that faith and you stand in faith, the Lord responds to your faith and he speaks to you. He answers you. Now, think about this though for a moment. Have you ever tried to apply your faith to a certain person in your life? And you see when you do that, it works actually. Like I'll say, okay, you know what? I need some help. And I'm gonna stand in faith that my sister here is gonna hear from me, from the Lord. Now, she may have not ever heard from the Lord, but because I'm standing in faith, the Lord will use her and he'll speak to me. Now, sometimes though, we push what we want on others and we apply our faith to get the answers we want. This is like witchcraft, be careful. I want you to notice something. You will sometimes go and you'll keep pressing God, quote unquote God, for an answer. And you're like, okay, I wanna know which road to take. And you don't get the answer you want, so you go to the next person. I wanna know which road to take. And they don't give you the answer. You go to the next person, I wanna know which road to take. And actually, maybe the Lord was speaking in the first few. And you kept pressing and pressing until you got the answer you wanted. And then you're like, ha! I knew it. Praise be to God. He told me exactly what I was thinking. This is the road I'm supposed to take. This is the way I'm supposed to go about it. And this is the direction I'm going to head in now. That's not confirmation. That's manipulating the word of God to do what you want to do. Confirmation. Remember what I showed you there. It's like, it lines up so beautifully. You hear him through the word. You hear him through the spirit. You hear him through your circumstances. They all line up. And most of all, there is faith, hope, and love. There is peace there. There's joy there. And it's all, well, it all works out. You know, you feel that peace in your spirit. You know, all right, the Lord is leading me in this direction. This is the way to go. All right, and now 
I'm going to talk to you guys about dreams. Whoo! Okay. This, is, this can be a heavy topic. The first thing I want to say to you about dreams is this. Most times, your dreams are about you. I want to let that sit for a moment. Did you hear what I said? What did I say? Such good listeners. I like your ears in this congregation. Your ears. Yeah, you got good ears. Most times, your dreams are about you. Now, I said that because so often, people will come and say, oh, I had this dream. All right, so my spouse, we were in the car, and they were driving, and boom, they crashed. And after they crashed, this and then there's a scene change, and then this happened, and guess what? And so I went up to my spouse, and I'm like, you totally got to be careful. There's a word of warning for you. If you don't get on the right path, the Lord, oh my goodness, you're just going to crash. You're going to get into a wreck. And this is, it's like, stop, 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 stop. You're telling on yourself. <laughs> you're telling on yourself in your dream. Your spouse represents your recreated spirit in Christ. And you are the one that's getting into a wreck and the Lord is trying to redirect your path. The Lord is warning you, not your spouse. He's trying to help you. He's reaching out to you because he loves you, but he's using people, images, things that are familiar to you that would represent something in your own life. You dream about your daughter and your daughter's backslidden or, you know, she's maybe uh, out in the world or something. Maybe she represents the flesh in you. You don't need to go talk to her about what you're dreaming about for her. You just need to look at your own flesh. But then, on the positive side, if you're dreaming about your brother and he represents something good, maybe he's a representation of the Holy Spirit in your life. And the Holy Spirit is doing something there. You see, dreams are like the Lord's, I love how Apostle Colette says it in, in the book. Dreams are like your secret, one of your secret conversations with the Lord. It's something between you and him. Of course, others can help you to interpret them to figure out what the Lord is saying, but the Lord is talking to you. Now, yes, there are dreams that are also external as well, but the ones that you will have most frequently are dreams that are for you. So how do you hear him through those dreams? Well, I want you to think of the last dream that you had. Stop for a moment, close your eyes. You're in bed right now. You're thinking of that last dream that you had. Who is it? Is your mom? Was your dad in there? Was your spouse in the dream? Was your children in the dream? Did you, were you running from that crazy dog again that tried to bite you? Now I want you to think, what does that person or that image, that animal represent to you? Does that person represent faith? Does that person represent love? When you think of them, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Man, I think of this person, or I think of a dog and I immediately think of fear. Okay, good. So when you dream of dogs, you're usually, there's something, there's a spirit of fear there. The Lord is trying to help you with that. What is it? What's the first thing that comes down? Don't overthink it. Don't get too deep. Don't follow the signs. Oh, uh, oh, if I see this in my dream, I think the Lord is trying to do this. No, don't get too deep like that. Just what's the first thing that comes to mind? All right, good, write that down. That person represents that thing that's coming to your mind. That era, that um, fear, that joy. Now, after you have figured that out, then now it's time to, well, apply that. To say, okay, well, if I'm dreaming of my spouse and my spouse represents the Lord Jesus, 
and I see my spouse giving me a ring. I don't need to go and, and beat my husband down and tell him, the Lord shows me you're giving me a new ring. <laughs> Dang it. Oh, I almost got away with that one. No, I need to say, okay, Lord, I see you giving me this ring. This is a sign of our covenant, our relationship together. Doing something new, I see. So precious. You want to renew our vows? You mean so much to me, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for taking me on this journey with you. And you just allow him to walk, walk you through that one step at a time. Realize that if the Lord is telling you, he's giving you a new ring, he's renewing your vows, he's start, you're doing something fresh, something exciting, he's putting something new on you, then start paying attention. See, now is the time where you can start hearing him through your circumstances. Now, you're not gonna be like, oh, I feel the Lord's, it's 20, like, uh, it's 2022. The Lord is doing something new. You just, you don't need to just keep trying to push yourself into something new all the time. Sometimes we need to just finish the old races. I just felt I needed to say that. But sometimes you just need to finish what you already started and stop trying to get something new. So that word's just something new is not for everybody. Sometimes you just need to evolve with what you got already. Sometimes just finish, finish the race. Stop starting a new one, just finish the old one. But anyways, yeah, I just had, I felt like somebody's, who are, who are you? Stop it. But sometimes you just need to go through and hear the Lord through your circumstances so that the rest of the puzzle comes together. You see, I'm not going out and saying, okay, I'm looking for something new. What's God gonna do? But if he leads me in that direction, of course I'm gonna follow, because, well, I follow him. I'm not gonna follow the signs, but I will follow Jesus. And if he's saying, I'm giving you something new. All right, I'm putting a new ring on you. All right, okay, so well, that old one, I guess, I, whatever, for whatever reason, he's changing it up on me. So you start going to church, and the next thing you know, they're asking you to, uh, to um, go and stand up here and, and pray over the offering. You never prayed over offering a day in your life. You're like, Lord, I'm having financial struggles and you want me to pray over people's money? This has got to be a joke. And then all of a sudden, you're going about and you run into somebody at your workplace and they're like, can you, can you stand with me? I'm, str I'm struggling in my finances. I'm struggling in my finances too. Usually the way the Lord starts to lead you is not a way that's comfortable. And you know what? What do you know? The Lord starts taking you on a journey to break free of the financial bondages in your own life, but you are only gonna break free when you step out to stand in the gap for others. You find that your greatest victory comes when you go to step out to help someone else. But for as long as you were selfishly looking at your own finances, you never got that breakthrough. So the Lord took you on a journey and he spoke to you through dreams and through visions and through others to get you to the place where you needed to go. Now, as you're gonna see, when you read th through this book, Eight Ways to Hear God's Voice, in dreams, there is what we call, there are the prophetic dreams, there's the internal dreams, there's external dreams, and you can read more about all the different types, but know this one thing, that in all these ways that we shared today, let me even go over them with you again. In every last one, whether it's through Urim and Thummim, the still small voice, visions, the word, journaling, tongues and utterance, circumstances, or dreams. Remember this, Jesus is speaking to you. He wants to talk to you. He wants to get his word across to you. He wants to tell you how much he loves you. He wants to give you direction for your life. He wants to help you feel settled in the land that he's put your feet on. Lord, what, where do I go next? What am I supposed to do? He's telling you already. 
You don't have to keep waiting for a prophet to show up. You don't have to wait for the right pastor to give you the right word from God. Let all these other people and words that you're hearing, let them be confirmation. If you would seek the Lord, incline your ear to him and listen, then everything else everyone is saying will just confirm what you know the Lord is already speaking and saying to you. And I just thank you, Lord Jesus. I open up the ears of each one here and open up their eyes to see what you want them to see. I just remove these scales that I see on these eyes these blockages, these restrictions where the enemy's been lying and saying, you can't hear him. I tear these lies down. You serpent, I just tear off your head in the spirit. You will stop whispering to the church. You will stop whispering and choking the seeds in the words that God has spoken. You clouds, you will disperse. You spirit of heaviness, you will be removed. You mountain, you be cast in the sea. Every blockage, I break you down in the spirit now. Every idol, you will bow before the king. I am speaking. And you are hearing. Just believe. Trust me. I'm talking to you now. Do you hear me? I'm not withholding anything from you. I'm not keeping anything hidden in a secret away from you. It's not my will that you strive to hear my voice. It's not my will that you feel like you have to push so hard to understand me. I'm speaking to you in a language that is perfect for you to understand. I'm meeting you where you are. And for some of you, I am bidding you to come a little bit further out of the boat and onto the water now. You already know how to hear me, but I'm trying to speak to you in a new way. Don't stay in that rut that you've been in. I'm giving you a new language. You already know how to speak to me in some of these ways, but I want to extend our boundaries. I want to switch it up. We're going to speak many languages together, you and I. We're going to go on many journeys together. I'm going to have you climb many mountains with me. This is only the beginning. For indeed, I have many gifts and I withhold none from you. As you have come here hungry to receive, I freely give it to you. So what is it that you need, my child? What is it that you want? Open your hands, for I place it into your hands today. You'll not walk out that door empty-handed. You'll not walk out that door empty, but I fill you up today. And I say yes to the promises that I've given you. I say yes to the desires of your heart. And I place these individual gifts into you now. It has your name on it. 
and it is for you, says the Lord. So receive it by faith. I realize that it is already yours. Hmm. Amen. I just see how the Lord wants you to take that gift. Take it by faith and start using it. Start walking in it. It's yours. Whatever it is that you want. Whatever way it is that you wanted to hear his voice. What you walked in here without, you're walking here with it. And I just thank you, Lord. And I just release these gifts that I see in the spirit. I release these these wrappings. I release all these different sized gifts into the hands of your people. In the name of Jesus, I loose it from the heavens. All these different weights and sizes of gifts, those that have been waiting years and have been travailing. I say it is birth now and the wait is over. It's done. Some of you have been waiting a long, long time for these gifts. And I just release it now in the name of Jesus. No longer waiting for it. It is time and it is the season. And the waiting is over, says the Lord. And I see some of you who you feel so like it's so stupid to ask for this. Just, I haven't paid a price for it. I, um, I haven't been holy enough. I haven't lived the life I know I should. And God says, my gifts are free. And I give them by grace. And so as you open your hands, I place these gifts in your hands. And you will walk with me in the cool of the day. You hear my voice. You know my arms. You feel my presence no matter where you are or where you go. My reality is with you and it increases every single day from here on out, says the Lord. Thank you. Wow. How are you going to use this teaching? I know I was up here today praying for people who are asking to hear more from the Lord hear his voice, unleash the direction he wants them to go. Don't put these notes aside, but put them into action. I encourage you to do that. So we've had a week of amazing teaching from this incredible team. Would you please honor them with me and thank them for all they've poured out to us. We love you guys so much. Every time I come across someone who's been in a meeting with you, oh my gosh, Dalton. I could hang out with Dalton all day. Nathan, he was praying over me. Oh my gosh, Chifa. You didn't see that coming. (laughs) You are great spiritual parents. Thank you. Thank you for pouring into us. We love you. I encourage you to go about your week. Spend time with the Lord. Spend time journaling. That was one thing I'm working on. And hearing what he has to say. Put these things into um, into work, into into your growth, and see what God does with it. Don't just be complacent. I challenge you to do it. We've had amazing teaching here. Don't just stick it in the drawer, but put it to use. 
So bless you. If you need prayer, please come up and our um, prayer team would be happy to pray with you. I can see some of you <laughs> are a little wrecked and that's okay. If you'd like us to pray with you, we'd be happy to pray with you. Have a great week. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you were blessed and encouraged. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more amazing content.